All right, this time the question is, how would text one respond to text two? Yeah, there's some other words there, but basically, let's read text one first. Philosopher G.E. Moore's most influential work entails the concept of common sense. He asserts that there are certain beliefs that all people, including philosophers, know instinctively to be true, whether or not they profess otherwise. Among them, that they have bodies or that they exist in a world with other objects that have three dimensions. Moore's careful work on common sense may seem obvious, but was in fact groundbreaking. So, uh, so groundbreaking common sense. Um, he, this explains the idea. Like, I don't even know what we're talking about here. Just they're explaining the guy and groundbreaking common sense. Cool. Let's look at two. External world skepticism is a philosophical stance supposing that we cannot be sure of the existence of anything outside of our own minds. During a lecture, G.E. Moore, and it's the same guy, uh, once offered a proof refuting this stance by holding out his hands and saying, here's one hand and here's another. Many philosophers reflexively reject this proof. Annalisa Kaliva called it an obviously annoying failure, but it found it a challenge to articulate exactly why the proof fails. That's a hard passage to understand. So, um, hmm. It's this part right here. Uh, he offered a proof refuting a stance. Well, we think of proof as proving something true and refuting as proving it wrong. But in philosophical terms, a proof is just kind of like an explanation. So um, you might have done proofs in your geometry class when you did like congruent triangles and things like that. It's, a, it's an argument. So proof maybe here, the best synonym would be argument. So he offered an argument refuting the stance of whatever this skepticism is. Um, I really, so, okay, Oof, I'm confused. Uh, based on the text, how would author of text one respond to the proponents of the philosophical stance, meaning the skepticism stance? Um, I guess they would just say there's common sense. I don't know. Because text one is about that? I have no idea where this is going. Let's see. A, by agreeing with those proponents that Moore's treatment of positions that contradict his own is fundamentally unserious? No, it, we're not saying that Moore is just like a bad guy. That's what being unserious means is you're being, you're silly. You're just, you're not taking the argument seriously. He's a philosopher. You can just tell by the density of the vocab words here that th this is a serious thing to these people. So yeah. Um, plus, I just don't love the word agreeing, right? It seems like these, the point is they're disagreeing. That, that text one is saying Moore was right, I guess. Uh, and then uh, two is saying that, He's maybe wrong, but we don't have any proof he's wrong. I don't really know. But it, agreeing does not seem right here. Um, let's look at B. By suggesting that an instinctive distaste for Moore's position is preventing external world skeptics from constructing a sufficiently rigorous refutation of Moore. So an instinctive distaste, they just, they just don't like him? Again, that sounds like the word unserious. It's just a fancier way of putting it. It means that somehow you just have like a bad feeling about a person. And so... The, they, the reason they can't produce a refutation of him is just they they just are blinded by hatred of the guy. No, like I don't I don't this doesn't even make sense. See, by arguing that if it is valid to assert that some facts are true based on instinct, it is also valid to assert that some proofs are inadequate based on instinct. I'm a philosophy major, guys, and most of this is nonsense to me. So let that just remind you that you don't need to know the topics in these passages to get these questions right. This is just, I don't know what this means. Let's see what D says. By pointing out that Moore would assert that external world skepticism is at odds with other beliefs those proponents must avoid or unavoidably hold. Okay. Moore would assert that external world skepticism is at odds with other beliefs those proponents must unavoidably hold. I love that it says at odds, right? If we, we were going with disagreeing, then that would be a good one to kind of match with that. Um, and it is valid to assert that some facts are true based on instinct. It is also valid to assert that some proofs are inadequate based on instinct. Gosh, okay. I mean, at this point, I would probably just pick D because it it just sounds like the right thing, right? It is, it's, they're at odds with those beliefs. I, I mean, I guess I should try to prove it, but... Let's see, by pointing out that Moore would assert that external world skepticism, so that's the thing talked about in text two, so two, right, so text two, is at odds with other beliefs that the people who believe whatever text two is saying must unavoidably hold. Well, what would those beliefs be? Uh, what are those beliefs, right, that they must unavoidably hold? I guess something like what they quoted here, here's one hand and here's another, right? So back to, to text one as well, they do talk about certain beliefs, 
that all people hold, uh, whether or not they profess otherwise. Among them, they have bodies. They exist in a world of objects in three dimensions, right? So I guess the, Moore is saying everyone holds those beliefs, including these uh, external world skeptics. So in order to be skeptical, because we're not sure about the existence of anything outside our own minds, then that belief of skepticism is at odds with the belief that you have hands, which makes sense because if you don't actually have hands because the real world doesn't exist, then you can't believe that you have hands, I guess. That sounds good. I mean, let me try a similar thing with C by arguing that if it is valid to assert that some facts are true based on instinct, meaning that you have hands or bodies or whatever, it is also valid to assert that some proofs are inadequate based on instinct. Some proofs are inadequate based on instinct. What does that even mean? I really don't know what this would mean. Some proofs are inadequate. But the point is they don't have a proof, right? The, the external world skeptics don't have a proof of why more is wrong. So what proof is inadequate? It's not adequate or inadequate. It doesn't, there is no proof that they've had. That's at least what text two is saying. Um, I, again, I just don't even know what C means. If this were the real test, I would definitely pick D. I'd feel pretty good about it. I'd probably be at like 85% certainty here. I would mark this review. If it's a hard module, I'm definitely not going to have time to come back to it. But if it's the first module, I would, and I would just do a little bit more of the work that I'm, I'm trying to do now to prove it. But I think this just gets to something that we see in the science passages as well, is like you can't be a master of all of these topics. You have to accept that you are going to be answering questions without really any underlying knowledge of the details. And that's okay, because the, the thing that's really going on here is that these two passages show a fundamental disagreement. And when we're asked how would text one respond to these people, the simplest thing is like he would disagree. We can get specific about what the disagreement is, but like focus on the, the disagreement part first. That is understandable whether the topic is philosophy or science or space or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Um, let me know if you have questions here. I'm curious if you got this wrong, what you picked. Like like I said, I, I would be marking this for review, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Like a D is the answer for sure, but like if this were a test, I would be pretty sure I'm right because D makes the most sense. It's the only one I even really understand based on the passages. And so sometimes, too, is another piece of advice. Uh, if you don't understand a choice at all, and it's not really because of vocabulary words. It's more just because of, like, how things are related. It is possible that it doesn't make any sense. There is no way to say to say what the choice means because in the context of the limited information we have in the passage – it's nonsense. It's just like random words being kind of linked together. And it doesn't make sense because we don't have any evidence to make it make sense. So I think that's a little bit what's happening with C, but maybe I'm missing something. Obviously, feel free to comment.